Hi all, Mass Barncup from Kaiser Power Electronics here. Today I'm going to take you through the reverse engineering of the Nokia Siemens Networks FRGL 50 watt 3G amplifier. Now this was done by Dastir, which is a user on highvoltageforum.net. And I will also put a link in the description to his documentation that he has shared on the forum. But he did such a great piece of work here that I want to make a video about it and share with you how he reverse engineered the amplifier and modified it to work at 2.4 gigahertz to be used in ham experiments and to communicate with satellites with. So really a worthwhile project to take a deeper look at. He compiled it into one big PDF file for all the documentation. So everything is here except the data sheets, which are then attached uh, in the zip file separately. But everything can be seen in this PDF if you want to download it. The amplifier PCB itself is mounted directly on a silicium magnesium aluminum alloy heatsink, and it is not something that you just take off. So as you can see here on the power amplifier that I sent him, I actually just had to, to, to take a saw and simply cut out the amplifier on the original heatsink. He made a nice little overview of all the electrical connectors and also the pinout of the pin headers, to which voltages and bits, which pins goes where, to which LDMOS power transistor or the smaller preamplifiers or yeah, some of the surveillance chips like the LM75A temperature sensors. After making the pinout of the amplifier, he made a breakout board to connect the two RF signals out to an easier well-known SMA connector and made a 9-pin serial interface for the voltage supplies. As we see here, he made it so that it can mount directly down onto the pin header of the amplifier itself. Very clever. The architecture, it is about as I also went through in part 2 video, the circuit analysis. That we have a input, we have the hybrid couplers, we have the small RF micro devices 2122 pre-amplifier before we go into the first BLF 6G2245 what the LD mass and here he then notes that you have the 2.1 gigahertz filters and then you have the output transistor the BLF 6G2280 and we have the output circulator and the microstrip coupler going back for the coupled feedback the LD mass and other amplifier biasing is a way of finding out how is this amplifier driven. So he found out that the example circuit in the Amplion application node is just about the circuit that is implemented in this amplifier. And a more detailed description of which ICs are used is that it's the same IC used for all the amplifiers in the power amplifier, both the pre, smaller and output amplifier, but it is actually manufactured both by Texas Instrument and ST micro devices. The original BIOS settings is so that it is driven nowhere near its saturation currents, but what he did to discover was that the final stage is biased at 910 milliamps on the right switch and only 6 milliamps on the left switch. And as he writes here, that suggests that it is a Dorothy amplifier. And if you want to get some more details on Dorothy amplifiers, I have a separate video on that. So check out the link in the description. The original S21 measurements that he did before doing any modifications on the amplifier shows that marker 1 we have up here at the top. It's a bit hard to see the purple numbers here, but marker 1 is at 2.085 gigahertz. So that's just about the mid middle of the uh, UMTS band, which is 2080 megahertz up to 2200 megahertz. To get an idea of how the modifications are going to affect the power amplifier going from 2.1 gigahertz to 2.4 gigahertz, he did also power and efficient measurements. And as we can see, we have the inputs up here in the table and he has plotted that here in a nice graph. And as he concludes, as we can see, the blue is the in dark blue is the input power, the green is the amplifier output power. As that does not start to flat out, it means that the amplifier is not saturated. And the light blue is the efficiency, which we can see goes just above 30% at full output power. The amplifier does need quite a few modifications in order to shift the frequency from 2.1 to 2.4 gigahertz or also known as the 13 centimeter ham band. 
Now what he needs to do is remove some filters, remove some strip lines or modify some strip lines in order to get another quarter or half wavelength frequency of those parts of the amplifier. At first he starts up by building a new case as he needs some more room to yeah, do some what was the original shielding and that is quite easy to follow how the stitched ground paths on the front side of the PCB lays out. And that is simply just to yeah, make a new 3D model like that. And here the end result is which is covered in aluminum tape and then patched up with conductive paint. A really nice result in building a new do-it-yourself RF enclosure. And as we can see here mounted on the unit we can see the original heatsink pointing upwards and he has his new shielding underneath. And seen from below we can see it's just yeah, a regular desktop amplifier by now. He did the electrical modifications by the use of Captain tape and that is simply just either used over the original tracks or simply cut out the original tracks or components and then put on some more Captain tape in order to shift the frequency or change the impedances of the tracks. And as we can see on this overview that he had to cut out the filter down here, remove the or change the input frequency of the first preamplifier, remove some more filters, some more filters and change the gate size and again change the quarter wavelength output combiner up here from the Dorothy pair. And in order to match this, uh, he simply had to do more and more measurements and then put on a two big piece where he used all the large pieces of Captain tape and then simply use a sharp knife and cut off small pieces in order to match the impedance to the new frequency. The S21 measurements of the modified amplifier now shows that it has a wider bond path and have about the same gain. And as we can see, point of one over here with the highest gain is now at 2.429 gigahertz. So the modifications for the frequency is successful, but let's see about the efficiency. So again, he has a table of recorded test data and let's scroll down to the graph and combining it with the results before modifications. Again, we have the input power on the dark blue and we have the output power on the green one. And as we can see, it is starting to going flat. So that means the amplifier is going into saturation at highest input power. But as we look at the light blue here, the efficiency is down to some 16%. So that is about half of before. And most of the explanation in this is the output couplers, which he cannot modify. So that would have to be desoldered and a 2.4 gigahertz coupler to be used instead. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this sh very short video and very fast walkthrough of how Dastir from HighVoltageForum.net reverse engineered a 2.1 gigahertz into a 2.4 gigahertz power amplifier. Very good, very nice. I really like it, so I wanted to share this. I hope you enjoyed it. So until next time, see ya.